Okay, so we're gonna do a game that I've never played before called Home, a unique horror adventure by Benjamin Rivers. Okay, let me save. All I remember at that point was finding myself alone. Oh, oh my head. Where was I? It was so dark. There was something by my feet. A flashlight. That house. Where was I? There was a body lying on the floor. Who was it? I didn't recognize his face. He was still kind of warm. <coughs> Ooh. Kitty. The desk had a computer and some papers on it and a single drawer. I didn't want to snoop, but did I open the drawer? Receipts, pens, and a blurry photo. Looked like a store of some kind. Why did this look so familiar? Blood on the wall. It smelled fresh and sickening. I realized it was blood on my shoes and pants. Oh man, I had to get out of there. I noticed that I limped as I moved down the stairs. How did I hurt my leg, I wondered. All I could really recall was coming home, seeing Rachel. I was upset, she looked afraid. I shook my head and tried to clear it. I knew I should head downstairs, try to find a way out. The shelf was full of books on local history and hunting. It seemed like the owner of the house really knew the area. An old dining table covered in dirty dishes for two people. There were dozens of beer cans and other liquor bottles among the dishes. The smell was turning my stomach. A black and white photo looked like the man upstairs and his wife, I guessed. There was no reason for me to keep this. Did I take it? I slipped the photo into my pocket. Maybe this would help me find some answers. gray mouse was stuck in a trap. It looked frantic but exhausted. Did I free it? I guess so. A collection of rusty tools. These looked like they'd been they'd seen a lot of use and were cracked or were caked in damp smelling dirt. Why weren't they in a shed? photo similar to the old one I picked up. It had been moved a lot. There seemed to be a switch behind it. Did I push the switch? Um, yes. It depressed, smoothing into the wall. I heard a faraway click somewhere. The door was taped up and seemed to be stuck. By the smell, I guess it led to the kitchen. What does the kitchen smell like? <laughs> the switch in the wall appeared to have unlocked the door. I'm not gonna go down there yet. Hey! I look like hell. My clothes were dirty and torn, and there was mud caked all over my shoes. What did you do, dude? The front door was blocked by a pile of furniture. I knew I had to find another way out. 
The bathroom was spotless. Everything was wiped to a sheen. I wondered if there was a man, if it was the man's wife who did the cleaning for, or him. There was a photo development tray lying on the floor. Some leftover negatives were sticking out, but they were pretty blurry. I thought I saw what looked like treetops. There were sheets of paper all over the kitchen table. It looked like a series of names were written down, but they were too smudged to read. I could only make out a few of the notes. Key card, ochre, last one, I promise. It didn't make much sense at the time. Trophy earned, cause and effect. The box looked heavy, but there were marks on the floor. It had obviously been moved before. Maybe I had found a way out. I must have moved it, right? I heaved the box forward and it finally gave. There was a ladder going underground where the box was. A dank smell rose from the passage. Did I climb down the ladder? Yes! I looked again at the photo I found in the house. The couple looked distant, like they didn't want to be in the same picture. I wondered where the wife was. My leg was in terrible shape, but I had to get out. Footprints in the dirt looked like more than one kind, and a lot of traffic. Places all over were marked on the old map of town. The industrial area near the river, various houses, and even the water tower near the old rail station. Newspaper clippings from the local paper. They were all about murders in town over the last few years. Wait! There were photos. Photos of our house. What the hell was that about? Maybe I should have looked around more, tried to find some kind of information. A work table covered in papers, dirt, and a handgun. I hated guns. I didn't take it, did I? I tucked the small handgun in my pocket. Its weight was somehow reassuring. It was so dark down there, and the air smelled stale and putrid. I couldn't believe what I saw. What was this place? I looked at that, I looked at that, I looked at that. There's nothing that way. I guess I'll go down there then. Some kind of homemade rack slung together with poorly cut wooden rope. It was caked with old blood. Somebody didn't actually use that, did they? Crudely made shelves. They looked like they were holding cans of some kind of corrosive. The labels were worn and slick, but I could still see the warnings. It looked like a cage. It was small, but there was something coating the bottom, something wet. I see another ladder going down. What's this? Oh, a door. The desk looked old and was caked with grime. On it was a stack of old faded paper covered with what looked like names. They were scratched out and illegible notes were written beside them in faded blue ink. I could only make out a few letters. He, if, e, he, <laughs> Heather, something, something, Ralph? I don't know. None of it made any sense to me. Me either, dude. Me either. There looked to be bones half dug into the ground, and the remains looked old. The faded clothes that stuck up amongst the dirt looked familiar. They looked like the clothes that woman was wearing in the photo I found. Was this the man's wife? Oh, lovely. Some kind of old boxes, they looked like they were years old. Wait a minute, these boxes had old clothes on them. 
clothes I remembered throwing out after Rachel and I moved to town. What the hell were they doing here? There wasn't anyone there. Was I hearing things? Bats. I remember noticing the broken ladder. I had to be careful. There was a rope hanging there. I wasn't sure how sturdy it was. Did I take it? Maybe the rope would make that broken ladder easier to descend. I had the rope now. There must be a use for it around somewhere. More bones. The rope I found would let me the rope I found would, let, would have let me climb down the broken ladder safely. Did I climb down? Yes. I could hear a faint hum and the smell from before started to get worse. A bunch of old newspapers. Wheat pasted together. A message had been hastily smeared on it. Keep out. Danger due to cave-in. I could still feel a faint impression of the rope I had slid down as I pressed against the heavy metal door. It was probably for the best that I hadn't jumped. The ache in my leg was bad enough as it was. If I could have, though, I would have run straight out of those awful tunnels. Who would keep such a place? At least, I thought, I had found that old handgun. It seemed to work, and from the smell of it, it had been used already. I kept the gun in my pocket. It seemed a familiar weight there. There was dirt on the ground, it looked wet, and there was grass smeared with it within it. I could hear a faint trickling sound like water. What was that? A kitchen knife covered in drying blood. Thinking about it made me sick. I didn't even want to touch it. Did I take the knife? I slipped a knife in my boot since I had the gun in my pocket. Did I really need all this? Oh. You know what, I wanna see what's up that ladder. I feel a little uneasy for some reason. Disgusting. It was a mess of filthy garbage bags. There were rips and tears in most of the bags. What looked like an old videotape was sticking out. Did I take the tape? Sure. I wasn't sure what I hoped to discover with the tape, but I took it anyway. was a rusty ladder sunk into the water, which smelled disgusting. I knew I couldn't climb down that. Maybe I could find a way to drain the putrid water. The door was locked. There was a musty smell from inside. I wasn't sure, but I thought it was some kind of regulator. I had no idea how it worked. I thought I could turn this water valve to shut off its flow. Did I turn it? Oh, sure, why not? I thought I could turn the... Yeah, sure. Might as well. And that's all of them. Uh, 
didn't work. Look like I turn off the water flow in this valve. I'm doing something wrong apparently. Do I have an inventory? If I gave up now, I would remember what I had seen so far on those awful sores, did I quit? No. The valve was still active. Did I turn it again? Okay. Okay, you gotta turn it a few times, I see. Looked like the water drained out of that grate in the wall. Hmm. There was a small metal key floating in the shallow pool of rancid water. Did I take it? I pocketed the small key, but it was so odd shaped, I had no idea what it might open. Oh, maybe that door up there. You know what I'm gonna try? The musty, crusty door. Safety poster had definitely seen better days. How old was this facility? Door was locked. I could see a faint light within. I found another dead body. A sore worker. By the wounds all over his face and body, I figured he'd been stabbed repeatedly. There was a key ring sticking out of the man's pocket. Did I take it? I thought about the knife I had found with some disgust as I carefully picked the keys from his pocket. I was almost worried he was going to grab me. A security camera. Don't tell me I'm turning in, uh, to be the murderer here. Like, I took the knife, so that makes me look guilty. I tried a bunch of the keys on the keyring I had found on the sewer worker, and one of them seemed to fit. Hallelujah! A collection of stale liquor bottles covered the floor. The wall was littered with dozens of old, faded papers. Whoever did this was obsessed with some local murderers. Murders. According to some of the clippings, bodies had been found in ravines, in the forest, and in one case dumped into the back of an abandoned truck. 
I couldn't be sure, but I thought some of these same articles had also been pasted up in the back of those tunnels. A faded receipt was half trampled on the floor. It was from the local train station and was for two tickets. I didn't know what use it could be, but did I... Yeah, keep it. I neatly folded <laughs> the soiled receipt and slipped it into my front pocket. Thanks for doing that. Woke me up. I used the key ring to unlock the door. The shelf full of security tapes was strictly organized, though covered in dust. Looked like the tape I found was the one that was missing from the shelf. There was a dusty VCR on the security desk. I wondered what was on the VHS tip I found. Did I play it? Yes. Oh no, the video showed a man right there in the sewers being attacked. The tape looked fuzzy and stretched like some like somebody had tramp somebody had tampered with it. It looked like there could have been two men. I wondered what was on the tape and why it was thrown out. I couldn't stand to watch that video again. Okay, so it wasn't us who murdered him. I mean, we would recognize ourselves, right? Would I need that gun or that knife before the end? Both weighed me down and aggravated my leg as I climbed that old ladder. The thought of that videotape still gave me chills. Who was it? Who was it that didn't want to be seen? Was it the same person that hid all those clippings away in that locked room? Oh, it might be us then. Suddenly, the awful smell of that story gave way up to a pine-scented blast of fresh air. Okay, that's where we came up. I don't want to go back down there. So I'll go this way. Don't want to miss anything. I tried the little key I had fished out of the murky puddle in the sewers. It fit, and I heaved open the rusty door. The wind was picking up a bit. The night air had become strangely chilly. This must have been the entrance to the forest that was mentioned on that map I had seen. Whoever was poking around in those tunnels under underneath that man's house had scribbled notes on this place, but I couldn't make them out. Here the sign pointed out various campsites and walking paths within the woods. It mentioned a river and maybe a washroom, but the rest was too faded to see clearly. Okay, I'm... I'm gonna check that door that I unlocked first. Nothing. Wait a minute, is there something? No. Mm. The old train station was quiet as a tomb. The only sound was that of the increasing wind buffeting the, the decrepit structure. An old ticket booth that looked fairly ruined. Inside the ticket window were sheets of paper and... Wait! What were these? Train receipts? I thought the receipt I had picked up might match these, but of course not. The station had been closed for years. The ticket must have been for the newer station that opened up on the other side of town, after this one was, uh, was abandoned. However, I noticed a series of fresher-looking paper 
covered in tiny notes scribbled in diagrams. Trophy earned, escape route. An old map encased in glass hung on the wall. It was the train routes connected to the old station. As I looked at it, it seemed familiar. Of course, the map I found in those tunnels at similar locations marked, and the notes I found on the other man's bookshelf. His notes mentioned the water tower, and even this train yard. What was he doing, coming back here? The old train was ripped open and hanging from a shred of metal, as well as the broken fence was it as well as the broken fence was a dark stained patch of cloth. It looked synthetic like some kind of outwear outerwear. Inside the train's shell I could see a few faint impacts like wounds. Could they have been bullet marks? Was somebody shot there? The ground was well worn, though I couldn't really make anything out. I realized I was touching the gun I had found as I thought. It was getting colder out there and I had to keep moving. Okay. A dry old picnic table sat lonely amongst the trees. It had carvings and marks from years of previous campers. As I tried to read some of the names and the marks, I idly thumbed the knife I'd found. If I wanted to, I could have carved something on that table, did I? Sure. With a few crude strokes, I etched a simple design in the wood. R, pl R plus H. I felt like a teenager defacing the table. The path ended in a cold-looking river. I wasn't sure it was safe to cross like this. Did I cross? No. In that darkness, it didn't seem wise to try. Maybe there was another option. <laughs> I, I was saying yes to everything, except that didn't seem safe. Let me see what's here first. Through the fence, I could see a dilapidated outbuilding. I wondered if I'd find my way around. I'm gonna get lost. Jeez. There were some personal effects shoved back into the rock. Wait. There was a notebook there too. Did I read it? Yeah. Inside the cheap dollar store notebook was a page... After one page of names and lists, none of it made much sense. The newest page contained several names. Heather, Olivia, Ashley, Cheryl, Iris, Daphne, Holly, Rose, Rachel. Rachel! Her name was last on the list and had a mark beside it in blue ink. The names Daphne and Olivia had been crossed out in the same blue ink. Cheryl, Heather, and Rose had also been crossed out, but these marks looked older and more faded. can't go that way. I guess we're gonna try and go through the river. Two bodies, two young women, were half dug into a hasty, shallow grave between the trees. The younger looking one was still face up, her dead eyes gleaming against my flashlight. I was panicking, but I couldn't leave them like that till they clean up the grave site.
I felt a wave of revulsion at the very thought. I couldn't help but be curious. What were their names? It didn't look like they had ID. That was a dead end. And I can't go that way. Oh my, what do I do? What do I do? Maybe I have to bury them, I don't know. I was panicking, but I couldn't leave them like that, sure. They seemed so exposed, which is what bothered me the most. I covered them up as best as I could and stuck a few twigs in the ground to create some kind of headstone. Where had these women come from? What were they doing out here in the woods? I don't know what to do. some of the other names and notes on the table surface. Rytron, Uncle Phil, Henry, Daniel, David, Jenny. Seemed like the table I'd seen a lot of use over the years. I almost wished I had paid more attention to those crazy scribblings. Maybe I would have been less nervous about entering that dark forest. I see eyeballs. I was relieved to be above ground again. I figured I should keep moving. But there's nowhere to go, dude. The recognition of the place seems sad somehow, but also omni ominous.
It looked like someone had been leafing through the old ledgers, looking for something, a name perhaps. I don't have an inventory or anything. What the heck? What do I do? All hail the power of the glow orb! Uh... Okay, I'm just... I'm going back and forth trying to figure something out and I just can't. I didn't know he could do this. Is there like a reason why he does that? Why can't I go there, dude? Those two girls I found by the river, were they on this list? And why was Rachel's name here? I had to get home. This is new. A few embers still burn within the fire pit. I thought of the two girls across the river and had a sudden and had to suppress a shiver. Who else was out in those woods? By the looks of it the fire hadn't been extinguished, it had just died out over time. The cheap dome tent could fit two people. Did I root around inside? Inside the stuffy tent were two sleeping bags still unpacked. Next to them sat two overstuffed backpacks. One was a cheaper looking striped bag that contained women's toiletries and some clothes. The other looked more expensive, though its contents were similar. A cooler had some ice in it, which had long since melted and contained only canned beer and easy to make food. I couldn't find any cell phones or car keys. Trophy earned a terrible tragedy. No, 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 don't something. No, no. The grimy sink had a small patch in the had a small patch in it that looked almost clean. It was a damp smelling plank leaning against the stall door. I might have been able to cross the river with it. Did I take it? I already crossed the river. I left the plank where it was. Perhaps just wading through the river would be safer. Really? Sure, why not? I managed to carry the plank under my arm so it didn't get in the way. Will something different happen if I use the plank? I don't know.
This is the campsite. So what's this? The sign was the same as the first one I had seen. This one... This must have been the exit to the other side of the woods. I had finally found the exit. Once I left, I knew I never wanted to return there. The forest started to thin out a bit. And through the trees I could make out parts of the town beyond and the first hints of light. The mysteries of that forest were behind me, but I could still feel them on my neck like a warm breath. Those girls I had found, someone had taken them for their camp from their campsite and had murdered them. Was it the same person who had left that odd notebook? I was even more eager to get somewhere safe and to find a way to reach and find a way to reach Rachel. Blah, blah, blah. As I stepped through the gate, I suddenly rec recognized the auto parts factory where I had worked as a machinist for all those years. The planet closed almost three years ago now. Times were better then. I thought I could hear a faint rustling behind me. Maybe it was just the wind. Oh, that was scary. Oh, not another dead body. Dug into the ground was a cracked old watch. It was mine. I bought it on a trip out west with Rachel. I barely went a day without wearing it. It didn't look like it worked anymore and it was heavy. Did I take back my watch? Even though it no longer ran, I clasped the watch around my wrist. Not another victim. I took it from his uniform that he was a security guard there, just doing his job. His head had been severely beaten and his face was covered with blood. I'm probably just picking up a bunch of useless items that's going to be like a negative effect at the end, but we'll see. One of the lockers hung open. Its contents were tossed around like someone had been looking for something. The door was locked tight. It seemed to be connected to the power box beside it. There was a large power box with five lights on it. Cables burst out of the box, sneaking off to other parts of the factory. The metal was starting to wear and cobwebs had coll collected on the corners. The box wasn't receiving power. Of course not. The door was locked shut and there was a little electronic box under the handle. A sign was pasted to the front that said, Danger! Closed! For repairs, I thought it said rabies. I was like, what? Every part of this plant smelled old and rotted. I noticed the old bulletin board on the wall. The board contained yellow clippings of newspaper cartoons and notices. There were notes to and from the guys that worked here. One of them was to Norman, who was one of the older guys on the line. power panel. Looked like it was shut off. Did I push the switch? Power panel still wasn't working. Did I try it again? Panel seemed to be working again. The open locker was stuffed with dirty work clothes and old boots. There was a photo of a woman taped to the inside, but it was scratched out and the face was unrecognizable. But you don't want that picture? It was shut tight. There was a rusty looking card slot on the side. The character kind of looks like that Rick Rolled guy. A rolled break table. The layer of dust and grime only made seeing this, str this sting more. The door had been hastily boarded up. The 
this was Norman's locker. The door was dented like someone had punched it. I don't remember him doing that when we worked there. Great, this one was working. A utility shelf crammed with mismatched tools and items. There was a claw hammer on the shelf. Did I take it? As I took the hammer, I noticed it wasn't as dusty as the rest of the tools on the shelf. Woo! The locker was a complete mess. Hidden at the bottom, though, was a magnetic card. Yes. Power panel still wasn't working. There we go. I struck with the hammer. The old wooden boards came apart easily. After I had removed the planks, I left the hammer on the floor. Okay, why? <laughs> Nothing. This was my locker. There in the factory. It stank of booze. There was a picture of Rachel on the inside. It, it looked like it had been torn up. I thought I had taken that picture home when the factory closed. It was a mess of empty booze bottles. I wondered if that man in the house had something to do with this. He sure had a lot of alcohol at his place. The key card I found seemed like it would pass through this reader. Did I use the key card? Yes. I slid the card through the old reader and turned the handle. There was some kind of ventilation hatch there. It looked like I could jump in the room below. My leg hurt enough as it was, but I couldn't, couldn't see another option. Did I jump? No. If I was too chicken to jump down that broken ladder before, why do it now? There had to be another way. The door had somehow locked itself again. There was no keycard slot on this side, which means we're forced to jump down the hole. I think I made a mistake. Oh man, my leg hurt like hell. There was a crumpled up letter on the floor. It had been scratched out heavily and it was hard to make out. Did I try to read? Yeah. Most of the letter was violent, violently scratched out with what looked like a ballpoint pen. All I could make out was need to. Just don't drinking need Norman. Who was Norman writing to? I stepped out of the factory, glad to be rid of its smell of its memories. I couldn't stop thinking about that room with the bottles in it. Was that guard I found outside really drinking up there? What about Norman? And who had rooted through all those lockers? I couldn't tell where I was as I looked around, but I figured I needed to get to a road. Get my bearings. Maybe Norman could help. His store wasn't that far from the turnoff to the factory, if I remembered correctly. Crunch, 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 crunch. Okay, we have to go this way. It sounded like it was going to start raining again. I had entered Norman's place. This was the back of the store that, that he ran. It was oddly quiet except for the faint sound of a television. The 
entrance to the front of the store was locked from the inside. It looked like I couldn't just pop it open. It needed a key. There was a bit of a there was a bit of blood on the keyhole. Oh, Norman's dead. What the hell? One of Rachel's old autumn coats hung on a rack. That was Norman's bedroom, wasn't it? What was this doing here? Inside the cabinet was a small but impressive collection of hunting rifles, shotguns, and even a few items I didn't think were legal here. One of the slots on the rack was empty. The gun I had found seemed to match the others there. If the handgun was Norman's, what the hell was he doing with it? The gun would fit there. Did I place it back in the cabinet? I carefully pushed the piece back in place and felt a great burden lifted. Trophy earned a close call. The TV still flickered some indecipherable channel. Oh, is that Norman? Oh no, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Norman, my co-worker and one of the few friends I had in this town, lay dead beside his armchair. His face and shirt were covered in blood. It looked like he'd been shot trying to get up. His eyes were wide with shock, though they were already drying. Norman, what was Rachel doing here? Why did you have her coat? Norman, maybe you deserved better. You probably did. Did I close his eyes? I closed his eyelids down, shuddering as I did so. I wasn't sure... I wasn't sure if wanted to give him peace, or if I just couldn't stand to think any more about what was going on. I guess this was Norman's kitchen table. He kept it clean enough, but there were water rings from two cups still in the wood. Kitchen trash bin smelled fresh. I did, I didn't dig through that mess, did I? Yeah, you did. I found a hairpin amongst the rotting food trash and pocketed it. I think your wife was cheating on you with your friend. Sorry, dude. I hate cheaters. I used the hairpin to pick the lock. The hairpin snapped in half, so I threw it away. At least it opened the door! The general store was small, but it was clean. It had the usual things, postcards, snacks, magazines, and canned goods. I never went there much. Rachel usually stopped by after work if we needed anything. Yeah. The register was mostly empty, and a fat sack of travel magazines sat beside it. The icebox seemed to be unplugged. It must have been off for a while. Most of its contents were half melted. There were various postcards from the area, especially from the tourist traps. One of the postcards showed an old black and white photo of the water tower. It looked to be in much better shape then. Norman was dead, but I had no idea why. Was he involved in all this somehow, or was he just another victim? That gun I had found only seemed to, co to complicate matters. It was such a relief to finally be rid of it. Home wasn't far off now, even though the rain was restless. I had to keep going. It was locked. This wasn't the right gate. Gate was locked tight. This wasn't my house. It was locked tight. This wasn't my house. The neighborhood's a local post box. A letter was sticking out as if someone hadn't pushed it in all the way. I knew it wasn't right, but did I look at the letter? There was no return address, but the envelope was addressed to Norman. Carefully, I tore it open and looked at the letter inside. It read, Stay away. She's mine. That was it. No signature. No other information. I had the wrong gate. This one was locked. I 
had entered our backyard, the rain gave me a terrible sense of foreboding, and it chilled me through my clothes. I was expectant, but also afraid. I held my breath as I approached my own back door. I was terrified to step inside. The house was painfully quiet. The only sound was my own breathing, ragged and sta strained, stained. I flicked the light switch by the door. The power was off. I remember having breakfast here on this very table. Was that yesterday or sometime before? The door to the basement, it was locked. Where had I put the damn key? The front door was locked from inside. I couldn't go out. Though I needed to see if Rachel was here. If the door is locked from the inside and we're inside, you could unlock it from the inside? That doesn't make sense. The door was stuck shut. There was an old-fashioned keyhole underneath the candle. Our television, I had purchased it before I knew I was going to lose my job. I felt pretty guilty about it afterwards, but by then it was too late. Books. The books, they were half mine, half Rachel's. Hey, now that I looked more closely, it looked like the man in that, in that house had some of the same books as I did. There was a suitcase on the bed. It was Rachel's. I remember it from that trip we took out west. Did I open the suitcase? Sure. I wasn't sure what to make of, make of the suitcase's contents. Inside were a few days' worth of clothes, some toiletries, and a train ticket? I checked the date and time. It matched the receipt I found back in the ho those horrible sewers. What was this? Rachel, who are you running away with? Norman. <laughs> All those trips to the grocery store when you needed things, she was really just hooking up with Norman. A hallway mirror had been smashed, its pieces scattered around the floor. Our sink, which needed, to be which needed to be replaced, one of the taps always stuck, but I hadn't gotten around to fixing it yet. We were lucky enough to get a house with one of those wonderful old clawed foot bathtubs. Wonderful. My laptop had been left on and only had a tiny bit of power left. On the screen was a website about the old water tower. There was a key in the top drawer of my desk. Did I take it? Now where was that door? The door was stuck, the old fashioned keyhole. But I took a key. Oh, is it for the front door? Rachel's not home. Um, oh, the basement. Right. I unlocked the basement door. There were old Christmas decorations in the box. The garbage bags were stuffed with old paint cans and supplies. There was a dirty old key here. Did I take it?